Hello everybody, this is Jeff Bain with Team Real and the Blues. If you've been following my channel, you've probably seen where I bought this older boat that had been abandoned pretty much. It had been sitting for 16 years and hadn't been started, hadn't been used at all. The motor itself only has about 10 hours, so it's a great motor. We just need to break it back in the proper way. Problem with a motor that's been sitting like that is the fact you'll get a lot of rust buildup inside. It's just surface rust, but inside the cylinders, and sometimes that surface rust actually bond to the rings. Well, if you followed the procedures in the previous video, and if you didn't see the video, just go back and look, and hopefully I can get a link to pop up right here. You can click on it and it'll show you what I've done to bring the cylinders back. But in this video, we're going to go over how to do a proper compression test. Compression tests are a great tool. They'll give you a snapshot of what the basic health of the engine is. All you're really looking for, especially if a motor has been sitting for a long time, is you want to make sure they're even and equal. And right off the bat, you're liable not to be because the fact the rings may still be a little bit loose or they may be a little uh, stuck, but it should come up. But the biggest thing is you want to make sure you have compression on all the cylinders. In a perfect world, all the compression would be exactly the same. But as long as you're within about 10%, you're okay. So if you got 140 on three and you got one that's at 130, 135, you're probably okay. It's probably just not loosened up. But here's how you do it. First, we'll go over the basic tools needed to do a compression test. First thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need a spark plug wrench that fits the spark plugs in the motor you're working on. You need a good compression tester. This one has the release on it. And it's not absolutely necessary, but it sure makes it a lot easier is if you've got a remote starter. And I'll show you how to hook those up. The remote starter works great because of the fact that you don't have to have the ignition on to do it. You can do it directly from the engine and there's no chance of the motor starting on you. So here we go, let's go over the steps. All right, the first step, I actually removed all the spark plugs. That helps relieve some of the compression on it. That way the motor spins a little bit freer. And the second thing you wanna do is you wanna locate the starter solenoid, and it's right here. If you notice, this one comes directly off the battery. That's the one we're looking for. Not the one that actually goes to the starter. Go for the one that goes to the actual battery. That's where you wanna hook up one of your clips. Now, we've got the power going to the starter. Now, what we need to do is locate these two right here, and that would be your starter solenoid jumps. When you turn the key on, the way this system works, when you turn the key on, it actually trips a little solenoid in here that, breaks the, that makes the connection, and then it makes the connection on the solenoid. So now that we've got this hooked here, here's your starter. You can spin it over. That's the first thing you need to do. And by doing this, you don't have to have the ignition on on the motor. So there's really no chance of it starting. And besides that, you got all the spark plugs out. The next step is go ahead and take and get your compression tester and screw it into each cylinder one at a time here. Screw it in. Make sure it's set to zero. And you spin the motor. And you can see, I got the reading right here. So that cylinder is showing about 140 pounds. Bleed it out. And you just go ahead and repeat it on all cylinders. Zero. Almost exactly on 140 pounds, just like the other one. And do your final one. Hopefully this will come out perfect, just like the other ones. We're about 145, 148 pounds. I think that's about as uh, consistent as you can get. That's just how simple it was to test this. Now 
as you can see we got really lucky this motors internals are in great shape beyond great for an engine that's been sitting for 16 years so i'm glad i took the time to lubricate those cylinders and make sure i didn't break any rings it would have been a shame to tear up such a good motor now the next step we're going to take we'll go ahead and put the spark plugs back in it seal those chambers back up that way we don't get any surface rust build up and the next step will be work on these carburetors motor's been sitting that long all the old fuel is guaranteed to evaporate it and form the varnish where the oil dried up inside those carburetors so my next step before i even try to run this motor for real i'll go and tear those carburetors down and go ahead and get them cleaned up make sure none of the jets are clogged make sure everything's flowing the fuel the way it's supposed to but you got to remember the fuel and oil are together so if it's not getting fuel it's not getting oil so that's another big mistake people make they'll start running this motor even though it sounds like it's running good problem is you may have one cylinder it's just leaning out just a little bit not getting the amount of fuel it's supposed to next thing you know you blow up an engine so stay tuned hopefully you learned a little something here and if you enjoyed what you've seen please subscribe if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them thank you for watching i appreciate it